Greetings, my little minions. It's Sassy Assassin back with another episode. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing a very serious topic, and that is bullying. The reason why I'm deciding to discuss this topic on my channel today is because of a recent tragedy that has happened within Gore World, and that is the passing of a YouTuber that goes by the name Lil Mama. Now, um, I just want to first say that I am so sorry to the family who has lost their, their loved one. I'm sorry that little mama was hurting inside to the point where she felt it necessary to take her own life. Like, this is a real tragedy. And... It's not within me to speak ill of the dead. I don't know, you know, even though I know she was a part, like, more part of Chantel's community and she was a supporter. Like, you know, at the end, you know, right now, I mean, she's gone. And whatever she may or may have said, I just feel like it really doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> right? We shouldn't speak ill of the dead. We should only just try to be kind and be supportive no matter what. And that leads me to say this, if you are a victim of bullying, I encourage you to try to get help. If you're somebody who is a witness to bullying, if you see something, you say something and you try to intervene, you never know what that person that is going through, whether they have the ability to help themselves or not. And I want to say this as a side, you know, as a side note, adult bullying is a thing. It's not just, you know, exclusively for children. Okay. Like I, you know, I've heard quite a number of people say, well, as an adult, you know, you need to grow up and just, you know, stand up for yourself. It's not always that easy. It's not cut and dry. Um, Sometimes even an adult doesn't have the capability of helping themselves in that way because they, whatever, you know, they may not be in a, the right mental state to do so. So just keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to girl worlds, um, I want to say this. It. What, who needs to really be held accountable in this situation are the people who are directly involved in the alleged bullying. Because we don't really know if there was any bullying as of yet. Uh, we've not really seen a lot of evidence to um, uh, to, to point that the, this this to point to that there was actually bullying. I find it unfair to, to blame an entire community of, pe of strangers when, in actuality, it, we, the people that really need to be held, like I said, need to be held accountable are the ones that actually took part in it. Like, the, the ones that wrote the messages to, and harassed Lil Mama, if that indeed did take place. Because to, I think to blame an entire community of strangers who, people who may, who probably had nothing to do with it, is irresponsible. And I know that's, that's being thrown around, you know, some people who, who are blaming the entire community because it's easy, right? It's easy just to say, well, it's all your guys' fault, you know, you, uh, girl world people, you part, uh, the side of FFG and, you know, Yaba or whatever, you know, you know what I mean, right? It look, it, no, it, it, it's the, it's not us, all of us in, in as in an entirety. It's, it's the people, it's the people who actually took part in it, who actually went the extra mile to harass and bully this person who decided to take their own life. Now, I'm not going to disagree and say, well, the girl world isn't toxic, that there isn't, aren't people who, go, you know, who really go, you know, just go IRL because there are people like that in this community who do go, go IRL, 
who I've seen not only in the Chantel verse, but in the Amber verse, like literally docks and harass, you know, and basically like harass. And I've seen like, especially with Amber, I've seen people filming her, you know, in the wild, basically. Um, there are people that when she first moved into her new apartment, like, so on the key, uh, from what I heard from like the Kiwi Farms, like they already had her address and her apartment number within the week of her moving there. There's also pictures of Wifey taking Twinkie out and at McDonald's. And there's like one video footage of Chantel in line, whatever, out in the wild. And we don't know if actually somebody who knows Chantel took that, but irregardless, there, there are people like that. Okay. And then there's inner fighting within the community, you know, you know, there's, whether it be your supporter FFG or, you know, Yaba or whoever. And like you want to say hater nation and then there's people on the side of like Chantel and Amber who also take part as well and who docks and who harass and stuff like that so you know there there's culpability on all sides but when it comes to little mama who like I said was a newcomer within their community the people in question who actually took part, who went that extra mile and made fun of her and pushed her to that point. Those are the people that need to be held accountable. Now, I already saw the live streams of Chantel discuss, you know, discussing the passing of Lil Mama you know, and I'm going to say this. She made it all about herself, which is not surprising because this is Chantel. I find it really hypocritical that Chantel's from like, what, two to three days of, of being an official Muslim, preaching and acting pious and talking about taking accountability and bullying and already passing the, the blame when it's like Chantel you're the biggest bully of them all you have yet to take accountability for your past actions you, you know you may think well I've been cleansed of my past you know not all of us have the same beliefs and all of us still hold you accountable for what you have said and done in the past before you were officially a Muslim before you took the Shahada and you have done nothing at this moment to show us that you have changed whatsoever as you have come on here on your pulpit and have, and and our virtual state virtue signaling and trying to be pious and talking down to us and it's like you don't have that right. You are like the biggest bully of them all. You constantly have talked about people's appearances and, and bully, like literally used your own platform to bully other people. Particularly, let's not like Dee Dee and French fried girl. You, you may think, well, they do it to me. So it's only fair. Chantel. You have, you're, you're a Muslim. You took the Shahada. That is a sacred oath. You can't do that anymore. But also, you need to be conscious of the fact that not everybody is a, is a believer of, of Allah, who is a Muslim, and like I said, still holds you accountable for your past actions. Until you show real growth on here and take personal accountability for your actions and for your words you need to get off your soapbox stop being pious stop virtue signaling 
take a seat and shut up because no one wants to hear from you. Another YouTuber that decided to add their two cents that really doesn't have a lot of room to talk is none other than Amberlynn Reed. She wrote a community tab post and I f think it's interesting that we hear what she has to say. Hope you guys can all see this, so let's read. If you make a joke and someone laughs, it's because you made them laugh. If you say something that hurts someone's feelings and they cry, you made them cry. Take accountability. If you bully someone enough to take their life, that's something you have to live with forever because you made them feel helpless. You don't know what someone is going through, so treat them with kindness. If you don't want to be kind, just move on. There's no reason for harassment, adult bullying, and constant ill intent. One is enough, actually enough. Cyberbullying suicides have been raised almost 9% in just one year. Imagine what it'll be like in 10 years. Let's make a change now before things get worse. Rest in peace, little mama. I am, I'm so sorry you hurt. Now may you rest peacefully. Okay. If this was coming from anybody else, I would say that this is a very kind gesture. Becoming from Amber Lynn, this falls flat. Amberlynn, you are the last person who has the right to come on here and talk about count accountability and bullying when you yourself fail to take accountability for anything that you do and say online and offline and you yourself have bullied others, in particular loved ones in your life. Let's not forget Becky. During the time when she was dealing with the loss of her mother, you consistently bullied her on live stream when she was there sitting beside you. Let's not forget about the time the, the time when you bullied her mother when she was having to have surgery on the same day. We haven't forgotten those voice notes, Amber. You lie, manipulate, gaslight, and troll your audience on a consistent basis for clicks and views because you want the money. You're greedy. But yet you think you have the right to come on here on your little soapbox and, be, and act all pious and virtuous and virtue signal when you are the last per person that has the right to do so. May do I have to quote you again, Amber? Trolling is... I'm the troll queen. Trolling is fucking fun, okay? Like, I love being the troll queen. Like, literal trolling enter the chat. Your words, Amber. Your words. Now, I'm more of a Amber Lynn Reed reactor than I am a Chantel. But neither of these women have the right to come on their platforms and virtue signal and lecture us about accountability and bullying when they are the embodiment of the very things that they complain about. Chantel used her platform to make to make Little Mama's death all about herself. And Amber is doing the same thing because not because she wants to come on here and and spread a good message, but because she wants to get a, attention. Because her channel is dying, because her money has been cut in half, and she needs to do whatever she can to get attention, to get the views, because she really needs that money. She just recently, very recently, used her family problems, okay, as a ploy on her channel. All for the clicks and views, all for the money. 
and the attention. But yet, you have the audacity to come on here and talk about bullying, talking about accountability. Now, granted, like I said, there is a lot of toxicity in girl world. There are people that go IRL. There are people that really just don't know where the line is. Now, you could, one could argue, well, Lisa, you're a reaction channel. You make consistent videos about Amber Lynn, so that makes you a bully. No, I'm not a bully. I'm a critic. I know where the line is. I'm not behind the scenes bullying Amber. Now, I've left a few scathing remarks. In the past, I tried to, in the early days, you know, contact her, you know, have a rapport with her because I, I was my way of trying to help her. But I don't harass her. I don't bully her. I don't go IRL and, and in the same week of her moving into her new uh, apartment, literally get the address and the number of her apartment. Yeah, that happened. The people have taken video footage of her out in the wild. You know, we've seen it. Like, no. At the end of the day, Amber Lynn and Chantel, they both deserve their privacy. Now, one could be argue, oh, well, you know, they make a spectacle of themselves on here. They, they, uh, open up their private lives to us. So, you know, they're the ones that are showing their butts. Well, yeah, that, it is true. But it's also not okay for people to, like, literally, when they're not online, invade their privacy. Like, to that point where they're literally taking, you know, video footage and finding their, uh, you know, their actual address. You know, basically doxing. Okay. Doxing isn't okay. But that goes on in the within every community, I feel like. It's not okay. Okay, and everybody on, on all sides is culpable. There are people that have gone that far. But it's not okay. And that that's... I feel like that's something that goes on a lot on the Kiwi Farms. I'm not like a Kiwi Farms person. I'm more of like a, a Facebook group person. Okay? Um... And yeah, I've seen a lot of vile shit on there, on the Facebook groups. Um, I think one in particular, but I don't even know if they're actually around anymore. But I remember, you know, over time, you know, I've seen over time just some stuff that makes me shake my head. And it's just like, what are you doing? Like, you know, you're just making, you know, you, things worse. You're, you know, you make all of us look bad, basically. Um, but like... At the end of the day, no matter what, bullying is just not okay. Now, um, I want to share a website that I found. It's a U.S. government website. Um, so if you need any, in any information and on bullying, I encourage you to... Head on over to this website if you can. Stopbullying.gov. This is an American website. I'm sure, hopefully, that every country has a website like this. But I'm just sharing the American version. It talks about, you know, bullying in general. Cyberbullying, prevention, resources. Um, getting help for, for bullying. I mean, there is a lot out there. I just... Some people not, might not be able to, like know where to look so I'm, I'm giving you like a starting point of where to look if you find yourself in a crisis or if you find like somebody you know in a crisis like here's a starting point for those just I'm I feel like I'm just like isolating for like Americans but like um if you can find like a, a uh if you're not in America and if you need to find um a bullying prevention in your country. Um, I mean, the best way to do it is just Google it, you know? I, I'm not trying to be callous. I'm just saying that, that that's how I found this. I just literally just put, you know, stop bullying in America. And I found, like, this is, like, the first, like, thing that I found. So, um, next I'm going to, now, now I'm going to discuss my own bullying background story. Just for context, just to be more relatable. 
for you guys to understand further why I'm deciding to make a video like this. Just keep in mind that I'm not, you know, trying to make this about myself when I talk about my own story. So, um, I had been bullied from a very young age. I can't even tell you what age. I, I don't even remember. I just said it was pretty much all my, my formative school years. Um, I, I don't even know the reasons, to be honest. I mean, one could argue I was a little bit chubby for, I mean, at some point. But, I mean, for a long time growing up, I was, I was like a bean pole, basically. So it wasn't my way. I also, you know, really my weight. And, but also I have always been a slow learner and I was pretty much like a band and choir geek. Those are like the three reasons why I could, why I was something, why a, a child would like, you know, would bully, would bully me. You know what I mean? As, as, as a child. Um, I also, you know, er, I mean, there was pretty much every, everybody pretty much bullied me. I was very low on the totem pole in the, like the hierarchy, hierarchy in, at my school. And even my friends who I thought were my friends took part in the bullying. There is an incident that I can, that will always come to mind that I will never forget. Even though keep in mind that I have forgiven these people and I no longer hold any grudges you know, um, apologies have been made on their part. Um, when it was, when I was in eighth grade, um, my friends decided to pull a massive prank on me. That was very hurtful. They wrote notes, supposedly coming from my secret admirer, left him in my locker and even had the audacity to pay a kid in my class to call me pretending to be my secret admirer. I later then found out, because I, I didn't catch on, that it was actually my friends that did it. It took me quite a while to forgive them. But I feel like they guilt tripped me into forgiving them because they felt guilty. But, sadly, even after I forgave them initially, when I was still living there, because I moved, like, my, my freshman year of high school away from them, they still did shit. They still talked about me behind their back. And it wasn't until years later that I finally started getting... I got letters of apologies and um, they all, pretty much all of them said that they were sorry about what they did. And like I said, I forgive them. I'm not one to hold grudges. But I mean, what they did was wrong and it was traumatizing. And their, their active part in bullying over the years that when I was living and, you know, when I was in their orbit, basically, um, it traumatized me for life and made me not trust people. And made me, when I had friends, when, you know, especially when I moved, like I clung on to the f little friends that I had and I even clung on to the, my abusers because I was afraid that I wasn't going to get any more friends because I'm like, I'm a geek. I need to hold on to the friends that I have, even if they're abusing me. It's a very effed up situation. But it also made me not trust people. And to this day, I still have problems with trust. So, my story is, is that bullying, especially when you're a child, can traumatize you for life and cause you to have what my problems is social anxiety, crippling social anxiety at times. I feel like it's selective. Like I can go out to a grocery store and talk to her in a person and be fine. But it's just like having relationships with people, friends, lovers, it's difficult. Now family members, like there are certain family members that I'm okay with, but there are certain ones that I'm not okay with. And I'm, I just, 
oh, it's hard. It's hard for me to maintain relationships because of what I experienced as a child. So yes, bullying, you know, we need to be kind to each other. We need to consider what we do and say, especially online, because we do not know who is behind the other computer screen. We don't know what they're going, what the person's going through, what their mental state is. Now, granted, we are, strangers are not responsible for other strangers, strangers' mental health issues. And that's another topic of discussion within the girl world, within this whole little, little mama situation, is that, you know, we just can't pass the blame onto everybody and say, well, you know, this person was mentally ill. It's like, how are we to know? How were we to know that, that this woman had PTSD, sorry, not PTSD, had uh, postpartum depression, that she was suffering from various mental illnesses? How is that our responsibility? I, I feel it's within the, the loved ones who knew her, her husband in, gen in, in particular, to help her, her, his wife. Now, I'm not passing the blame. I don't know what... I don't know the situation. I don't know if he tried to get her help. So I'm not passing the blame. I'm just, in general, that, that, that's my opinion when it comes to that. It's not our responsibility. But it's our responsibility to be kind. Um, we can give constructive criticism. But it, it's not okay to be like, outright just be cruel. And let's not pretend we don't get that on all sides. Whether it be you're a foodie beauty or Amber Lynn supporter. Or whether you're, uh, you know... Uh, let's say hater nation or whatever. I don't even know what that is anymore. Personally, I, you know, I used to consider myself a part of hater nation. I guess I was trying to be cool, whatever, but no, like I'm just on my own. Like I'm my, in my own little corner. I, you know, I try to be respectful. I keep my head down and I just, I say my piece and then I log off. Now, sometimes I will feel if I, you know, I will feel incensed to leave a, a comment on one, maybe Amber Lynn or Chantel, which I recently did. I'm not going to lie. You'll see it. If you go onto one of their videos, I, I left a comment in Amber Lynn's community tab post, the one I just read. And in one of Chantel's recent videos of her talking about the tragedy of, of Little Mama, I left a scathing comment as well because I was incensed. I wasn't like cruel or like you know, but I I just I was critical and then I just said that's it I've said my piece I'm gonna just you know log off and that's it you know I'm not continuing I'm not gonna continue to leave scathing comments you know I'm not you know whatever I, I'm just gonna continue to assess the situation from the privacy of my own home um quietly and see where this goes but I also felt you know, this video, if, it, if I'm able to help somebody in any way with my, this video, with sharing my experiences, sharing my opinions, then I feel like maybe I did something good. But like I said, this isn't about me. This isn't about Chantel. This isn't about Amber or Goral. This is about just kindness. This is about mourning a human being who was suffering. That's what it's about. And it's about spreading awareness for a very serious issue that often gets swept under the rug. So that's pretty much all I have to say. Like, share, subscribe, comment below, Hit the notification bell if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about this video or any of the videos I've made so far on this platform. Please feel free to leave a comment below or hit me up on any of my social media accounts. If you guys want to support me and my channel, I do have a, I do have a cash app, PayPal, and Venmo. Links are in the description below. Um, keep in mind that I am not yet monetized and I am trying my hardest to become monetized. So if you are new to my channel, I encourage you if you feel so inclined to subscribe because um, at the, that time that is what need, is needed to for me to become monetized. So um, until next time, you guys, peace out, my ninjas. I love you all and stay kind.